In lab next week, we're going to be looking at dielectric materials and attenuation in those materials. Historically, pacemakers were built to have electrodes in the heart itself. Here's an image of a heart. And the rest of the electronics and the battery and all that would all be out here. It's I still inside the body, uh, but it's outside of the heart. So, for example, it might be implanted under the clavicle, which I think is the collarbone, um, between the skin and that muscle and pe pectoralis major. Uh, this arrangement means we have to use leads, these right here, to connect these two different parts of the pacemaker, the electrodes in the heart itself that actually do the job of helping the heart, and the implantable pulse generator that has the battery and the circuitry and all that. The leads, unfortunately, if you look at the literature and outcomes for patients, it's, there's actually a, a number of problems that come up for patients. And it's also kind of annoying to have, in this case, part of the pacemaker outside of the heart in another part of the body where it has to be implanted. So as a result, it's more advantageous to have what's called a leadless pacemaker. In this case, the entire pacemaker is implanted into the heart, and of course it has to be miniaturized. So this has been developed over, um, over many years with uh, advances. And it's implanted by a catheter so it's pretty uh, non-invasive. You have to get access here to this blood vessel uh, from the groin area, and then you can move up and get, move the catheter into the heart and uh, then implant it here. This is an example. Here's a docking interface for the, um, let me get rid of my, diag my notations here. This is a, a docking interface for the uh, catheter to attach to. Here is like a helix, which oh, here's a better a spring that allows it to attach to the heart, but you can also remove it again later if you need to. And here are the electrodes. We have an anode and a cathode. Here are some example x-ray images of a person who has this leadless pacemaker implanted in their heart. To fit inside the heart, the components of the pacemaker must be optimized, and they have to be optimized to work on a small spatial scale. So this is an example. Um, this is called NanoStim for this pacemaker, and it's just a little bit bigger here than a quarter. And here are some of the parts that are labeled. So the helix, which allows it to be planted, attached to the heart. We have electrodes, number two. There's a, a circuit here that is programmed to have it do its job. You'll also notice that there's an antenna, number four. And the antenna is important because we don't want to just put a leadless pacemaker into the body and just leave it there without any having any information about what it's doing or how it's doing. And so we need some information from it. And like, uh, for example, battery life information, how the heart is doing, do we need to reprogram it? Uh, and so we'd have to be able to communicate wirelessly with an external controller, in this case, completely outside of the patient's body, not implanted to a controller somewhere inside the body. And that's why you can see here that the, uh, there's an antenna, and it needs to be able to tra both transmit and receive information. This antenna, this nano stim works at 2.4 gigahertz. And the wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz is, if in free space, is about 13 centimeters. And even in the body, where the wavelength would be reduced a little bit because of the materials, it's not free space, we can expect that we would need a fairly large antenna if we're going to have it radiate very well I and due to the wavelength, the size of the wavelength. We'll be looking at this more in the antenna section of this course. So this antenna will have to be miniaturized, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, but if we get to the parts, uh, other parts of this leadless pacemaker, we have the battery, 
and here is the other end is our do docking button or some way to connect it to the catheter. With regards to the antenna, here is one possible solution for this. Here's an example antenna that it's called a patch antenna. It's small enough that we could be it could be used inside of a, the leadless pacemaker that's only a little bit bigger than a quarter. Here you can see it for scale, for size. And uh, this is flat, so it's called a patch antenna. In this case, the conductors you can see, these yellow parts, are not in a straight line. Uh, the way they wrap around and the way there's different layers and the patterns on the different layers uh, allow the electrical length of the antenna to be much larger than we would expect it initially to be. They you know, expect it to be considering the size of the total size of the antenna. So like if you were to take these this yellow um, conductive strips, strips here and lay them out straight, it'd be much larger. And then also the, due to the, the complex geometry here, uh, it looks um, much larger than it actually is. Where th this type of antenna is going beyond the scope of this class, we do have an antennas class that you can take at the U if you're interested in learning more about these types of antennas. Um, in this class, we're going to be dealing with more simplified antennas as a way to get started. But before we get to antennas, in lab next week, we're going to be exploring how the EM waves from an antenna like this would propagate through the body. So if we want to set up a communication system with this pacemaker that's implanted all by itself in the heart, uh, we want to know how those signals are going to propagate through the body to an external controller. So we'll be studying the electrical parameters of a few different human tissues, and we will um, look into how fast we can expect the EM waves to attenuate as they travel through the body. We want to make sure that we can receive the signal and the signal is strong enough that we can receive it and decipher it and use it 